I can, I'm resilient. At first, I didn't think I was as resilient. Like I grew up pretty rough. I had to learn everything on my own. I was the first generation person in my family to go to law school. And so I've been able to break a lot of barriers in my family. And so when I, when I felt the bar five times, I felt defeated, but I knew deep down inside I had a calling to be a lawyer. And so every night when I would go to sleep, I would be overwhelmed, but I would just tell myself, I'm meant to be a lawyer. I'm meant to be in this profession. I'm going to pass the bar. Welcome back to hanging out with successful bar exam takers. And we have a successful Georgia bar taker with us today. Hi, Robin. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Good. What does it feel like you know, just a couple of weeks after the results have come out? Have you processed it yet in your own mind? I'm still processing it. It's taken me a while to process it because I failed four previous times for Georgia and I failed one previous time for D.C. So when I got the results, I was I'm still in shock because I'm not I guess it's been a long time <laughs> coming because I first started trying to t- I took the exam for the first time in July of 2017. So it's been a, a, a real journey for you. I, I appreciate you being willingness to share that story with our audience, because I know there are going to be a lot of people in similar situations, and they're going to want to say, how did you do it, Robin? <laughs> so why don't we go back to the first, when you started with the bar, and tell us a little bit about what your experience had been in those initial attempts at the exams. The initial attempts at doing the exam, I was overwhelmed a lot. I did the, I did Kaplan bar prep and the first time I I just got overwhelmed based on how they were teaching the materials and so I did it twice with Kaplan and I self-studied and then I still wasn't successful in um, passing. I also did adapter bar where they gave me a lot of questions online but I would just be overwhelmed by the materials. Yeah it's really a challenge isn't it to take all that material and figure it out. Did it get harder for you the more times you took the exam in terms of just your own mental approach going in? It got harder because I started to feel defeated because I felt like I was never going to pass. And every time I would read the statistics online, it would say once you take it a few times, every time you take it, your chances of passing just dramatically decrease. So I got, I just used to get very nervous, especially after the second time I got, I just felt like I wouldn't be able to pass the bar. Yeah. And that's a pretty discouraging feeling. How did you find Celebration Bar Review? For my first internship that I had when I was in law school, at the end of my first year, my supervising attorney, Mario, told me, he was like, I took Celebration Bar Review and I passed and you should take it. But when he told me this, I was just, I was going into my second year of law school. So I just dismissed what he was saying because I was like, everybody else is taking Kaplan. So I either just go ahead and pay my $3,000, take Kaplan and ignore him. But he kept telling me over and over, you take Celebration Bar Review. And I was just like, oh, whatever. Yeah. And so after you tried some of the other courses and things weren't working, you came to us. And the journey to passing for you, I think I'm looking back at your your records. I think your score was 254 when you came to us. And what did you get on this most recent exam in Georgia? I got a 271. Wow. That's fabulous. Congratulations. That's a 17 point jump. Uh, That must just make you feel incredible. Very incredible because even though this time around it was open notes for the essays, I didn't look at any of my notes because I was afraid that if I look, I would just get distracted versus what I know versus trying to synthesize what I'm seeing. So I feel really good because I wrote my essays exactly how you told me to write them, where you first identifying the issues and then to look at everything in terms of opposite and make small paragraphs based on that. I watched that video that you put up. I watched it twice because I was like, I have to get this down packed. And once I was able to see everything in terms of opposites, I was able to make better arguments because I was like, okay, even if I don't know the law, what's the opposite way of arguing this? Uh, And that's a big difference. I'm assuming that when you first took the bar, you used issue spotting and IRAC writing. Is that correct? And so what's the difference in your mind? Because I know a lot of people are going to ask, they started with IRAC writing or issue spotting. What's the difference between that and and the writing style that you learned from us? I would say the difference is your strategy is more specific for the test because you're under time constraints and your writing, your style of writing aligns with the way the rubric is for grading because you have to be able to spot the issues and make all this, make all the arguments within a lot of amount of time. I feel like IRAC 
it's a good way of writing if you're in law school and you have a lot of time and the teacher is more grading for, I don't know, the context of the course, but for the context of the test, I feel like your way of writing is better. That's great. Now, for the, for those in our audience that don't know, Georgia did a lot of things very differently in October of 2020. Mm -hmm. They went online and then they changed the number of essays from four down to three. And then the big change, I think, and tell me if you agree, was they went from 45 minutes for each essay down to 30 minutes. What did you think of that? It was hard. I can't lie. It was a lot. But the thing that helped me was I didn't go and look for materials. Like I had, I put my books on a table, but I left a lot of books out because I was just nervous. And when I looked at the, when I was going to look at the books, open them up, something was just like, don't open the books. Just trust what you don't open up the books at all. Just trust what you know. And I think that helped me out a lot because since you only had 30 minutes, my 30 minutes were spent just reading the prompt and then using your way of writing the essays to complete them and looking at things in terms of opposites and writing separate paragraphs. And that helped a lot because even when I didn't know the law, I could say, well, okay, what's the opposite of this? What's the counter argument? And I was able to write that down. Now, another part of the exam in Georgia was the performance test. Can you talk a little bit about what that was like to do it online? It was hard at first because the instructions regarding how to go about taking the performance test, they were modifying them as the time went on. So towards the end, the rules were, you basically had a stream that had the performance questions on it. And then you also had a separate stream that had the essay writing, but then you could also use stretch paper to outline. So what I did was I used the stretch paper to outline. So I outlined all of the pretty much the topic sentences, like how I was going to go about organizing the, my thoughts. And then once I was able to organize all the topic sentences and headers on my paper, then I used that to start writing. And that's a great way to do it. Obviously, this was the first time the bar exam had been given online. What was the process of being online and taking the test from your home, I assume? What was that like as compared to going in and, and being in person? Online was better because for me, it was more relaxing because I was able to just take it on my dining room table and be comfortable. But the part that wasn't as good was if you, if you're doing, if you like stretching out stuff, if you're doing multiple choice, stretch out the wrong answers. If you're doing an essay, if you like to just have a lot of papers around, that was hard. But what makes it easier is just focusing on a strategy and not necessarily focusing on, do I have all the papers? Just focus on the strategy. Yeah, I, I think that definitely is, is wisdom. Did you, did your computer work okay? When was the tech part of the exam all right for you? Yes, the, my computer worked okay. And then another thing about taking it at home, it was later in the day. So it wasn't at eight o'clock in the morning. I forgot what time it started, but it was at a good time where you don't feel like you were up too early. Yeah, as I recall, it was like 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. And it was not really horrible days. So that was a really a nice part. And certainly nice to not be in a room with a lot of other people, wasn't it? Yeah, it was nice. You don't have to worry about people coughing or sneezing by yourself. Yeah, absolutely. And then the last part of the exam were the 100 multiple choice questions. Now, Georgia's interesting in that you have to hit a certain threshold on the multi-state or the multiple choice in order to even get your essays read. So for you, what was the multiple choice online like? How did that process go? I made a 120 on the multiple choice online. I think the threshold score may be like a 115, 116 or something. It was hard for me, the multiple choice, because I, I never really been good at multiple choice, but I kind of knew coming into the exam that I needed to focus more on making sure my essays were high, that I got a high score on them. Yeah, and obviously with that score and the, the multiple choice questions, that is a really good uh, essay score that you got. Let's talk a little bit about how you studied and prepared going into this exam, because of course, Georgia had planned to give the exam in July, and then they postponed, and then there were the, all the changes and the problems with proctoring. What was the process like for you? It was stressful at first because the, the dates kept changing, and then as the dates were changing, then it was like, okay, if it's not in person and it's online, if it's online, do we have stretch paper or not? But what I would try to do is whenever the dates would postpone, I would just give myself like a quick mental break from studying just like a day or two. So that way I wouldn't be too overwhelmed. 
but I would say that your messages that you were sent out every day were really good. It reminded me of the messages Joe Osteen sends out every day where he encourages people to keep going. So I remember the days where I would feel like, I don't know what's going on. I would get a message and it'd be, it'll be like, just keep the faith, keep going, just do a little bit each day. And that helped me because at times I just wanted to give up because I was just like, this is impossible. Like I failed it four times. It's the fifth time it's going to try to be the charm, but it didn't, I didn't feel like I could pass. Yeah. And that's one of the big things and the big challenges I think that any repeat bar taker has to face, isn't it? Is that internal sort of the, the doubts and the fears that come up and, and grab you. And as things were spiraling out of control with COVID and social uh, justice issues and the exam being pushed back, it all had to feel a little overwhelming. Yes, it was very overwhelming from all the protests that were taking place to a lot of stuff being closed down and just not being able to go to traditional places to study. It forced me to study at home, but it also forced me to just focus more because I could focus on coronavirus and the social justice issues, but something inside of me was just like, okay, just don't get distracted. Just keep studying, keep focusing on the exam. And were you working while you were studying or studying full-time? What was your week? I actually had lost my job in May. And so when I lost my job in May, I was able to get on unemployment and the unemployment was able to sustain me while I was studying for the bar. So I would occasionally do a little doc review projects, but for the most part, especially when it got towards September, I didn't work. I just focused on um, passing the exam and being on unemployment helped me. We've obviously got to feel a lot better being a member of the bar now in terms of employment prospects, right? Yes, yeah, it feels much better in terms of now I can look for a real job. <laughs> when the exam was over and you knew you had some period of time to wait after the exam and you'd taken it before unsuccessfully, what was your thought process after the test? What were you thinking to yourself about the process? I just kept telling myself, even if I fail, I was going to try again in February. So I told myself that because I didn't want to I don't want to tell myself I passed and I didn't pass and I have to go through the whole process of just being disappointed. So I kept telling myself, no matter what, you're not going to give up. You're going to take it again in February. You're not going to give up. You're not going to give up. I think that's so important to hear. When the exam results came out and we didn't get much warning, it was just like they're coming and they're here. <laughs> Can you tell me what that process as you start to go? I guess it was an online notification from the examiners. Tell us a little bit about that day and getting your results and what happened. Yeah, that day I was literally just laying in my bed. I just woke, I had just woken up around like 11 and one of my friends who took the bar exam texted me. She was like, the results are out. So I was just kind of like, okay, let me just check this because I was so used to failing. So I'm just kind of, let me not get my hopes up. So I just checked it on my phone and it said I passed and I almost fell out because I was just like, oh my God, this journey is finally over. It's been three long years of trying to pass this exam. So I immediately text the family group chat. I told everybody I passed. I was like, I only passed by one point, but I'm grateful. So I was overwhelmed. Yeah, yeah. And we're so proud of you. And you passed by one point, but your jump was so big that it really was an extraordinary uh, result for you. I know that there are, as I said, lots of people who will be watching us today who are in a similar situation with taking and failing the exam and feeling like they want to give up. What advice would you have for them, Robin? I would say the first advice I have is if you have a religion, rely on your religion in terms of faith. And then second, only surround yourself with positive people while you're studying. I know that's what I had to do. I got into therapy because I was having a hard time just focus in my mind. And one of the things my therapist told me was I had to learn to do have boundaries with people, especially while I was studying. So that means that if you have to study a few times a day at a certain time, don't answer your phone while you're studying or you can't process people deep problems while the time you're studying. So I had to set up a lot of boundaries. So it was faith and just having more boundaries with people. And That's just great. knowing that if you keep trying, you're gonna eventually pass. Yeah. Somebody asked me the other day, they said, I'm so afraid of failing again. And I said to them that in all of these conversations I've done, I don't think I've ever had anybody say after they passed, it wasn't worth it. W would you agree it was worth it? Even with the- Oh, the it was worth term? it. I'll do it all again. I, will, I, don't, I wouldn't want to do it all over again for three years, but if I can get the same feeling I have now, I would do it over. 
Yeah, that's such a, a valuable piece of advice, I think, to have for folks. Now, you were in our basic coaching program, and one of the questions I get from people sometimes is, do you have to have all the bells and whistles and everything else to be successful? You just did what we asked you to do. You followed the course, and you studied and watched the lectures and did the writing, and that worked for you, right? Yes. Yeah. And I think it's important to, to point that out to people that you didn't have to buy the most expensive course to get the result that you wanted. I couldn't so. afford it at that time. I had just enough money for the basic course. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And did you participate in the group coaching calls or the in the Facebook group? I would see the messages people would post in the Facebook group and I would read some of them, especially if they were encouraging or motivational. I would read them, but I mostly just stuff studied with the materials. Yeah, and you had a syllabus, and so you just followed the assignments that we gave you and the time frames for each assignment, right? Yeah. So what's next on the horizon for you? Now, with passing the bar, what happens next? I want to be a civil litigator. I want to help people. So I'm thinking about working at Legal Aid and helping people from, from that organization perspective. That's great. I, I look forward to your membership in the bar and all the things that you're going to do. I often say that the people that succeed on the bar when they haven't, when it's not, when it doesn't come easy first time when you pass, those are actually the best lawyers because they have demonstrated that willingness to stick to it and stay with it and, and persevere. You feel like you've learned something in this process about yourself? Um, I learned that I can, I'm resilient. At first, I didn't think I was as resilient. Like I grew up pretty rough, but in terms of I grew up in a single parent household and my dad was incarcerated. So my whole life I had to pretty much get under, I had to learn everything on my own. I was the first generation person in my family to go to law school. And so I've been able to break a lot of barriers in my family. And so when I, when I felt the bar five times, I felt defeated, but I knew deep down inside I had a calling to be a lawyer. And so every night, when I would go to sleep, I would be overwhelmed, but I would just tell myself, I'm meant to be a lawyer. I'm meant to be in this profession. I'm going to pass the bar exam. So after I passed, it showed me that I'm still resilient because for a while, I didn't think I still had the resiliency in me because I had already went to Emory. I was at law school at American. So I felt, okay, I don't have to be resilient anymore. I got it. I made it. But then once I felt so many times, I was like, oh, I guess I am still resilient because I didn't give up. Well, we're so proud of you and pleased. And I think resilient is a great way to describe you and everything that you've done. I really want to thank you for spending time with us today and sharing your story. I know it's going to encourage a lot of people. Any last thoughts that you want to share with our audience today? I just want to tell people to just believe in yourself. Don't allow other people who pass on the first time to make you feel like you're less than them. Just know that if you just keep studying and you like, I think the thing I like about your course is that you teach the students how to take the court, how to take the test, not necessarily, the, you teach us the, what's on the test, but you teach us how it's tested. And I think that's the biggest difference. And sometimes when you take other commercial bar review courses, they're just teaching the content of the test, but they're not teaching you how to take the test. And sometimes that's what you need to learn. You need to learn how to take the test. And so I would say, I would encourage people to enroll into the course and I'll also encourage people to maybe get into therapy so you can learn boundaries and just rebuild your self-esteem because after failing so many times, it is natural for your self-esteem to be di diminished. So I would just encourage people to just believe in themselves, get extra help, not just the course, but get therapy to help you uh, regain your confidence. And then once you're able to regain your confidence and learn how to take the test, you will definitely pass the exam. Great words of advice, and you definitely are a terrific example of all of those qualities and skills, and we're certainly delighted that we could be on the journey with you. Thanks again for being with us. Good luck to you. Um, you. Excited to see where you go and what happens with your legal career, and uh, we'll look forward to great things from you. So thanks again, Robin. We appreciate it, and we're going to say goodbye for now. Take care, everybody. All right. Thank you.